All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to continue on with this idea of a codon, right? A series of three nucleotides uh, that code for a specific amino acid, and those amino acids then come together to make proteins, and that's like the ultimate bridge between genotype and phenotype. So each codon, like I just said, does call for a specific, let's get all this stuff in here first, amino acid. But when you have many amino acids that are linked together, that's when a protein is made. Now, a few codons don't call for any amino acids. Uh, one codon actually acts as what's called a start codon. So this tells uh, all the enzymes involved in this process where to start reading this gene at to make this protein. Then there are three other codons that are actually stop codons, which do just what they sound like they do. They stop this process of reading the gene to make the protein. Now, a gene on a chromosome is many, many codons long, right? Many series of threes, okay? Because a codon is a series of three nucleotides. Each gene is ultimately the code for a particular protein, with each codon in that gene being the code for a particular amino acid. So genes provide <coughs> the instructions for making specific proteins, but a gene does not build the protein directly. The bridge between DNA and protein synthesis is actually RNA, okay, RNA. Let's talk about RNA or ribonucleic acid. <clears throat> Let's talk about the differences between DNA and RNA first. Uh, if you're very familiar with DNA up to this point, which I really, really hope you are, you should be able to tell that this image of RNA alone makes it look different from DNA. The first thing we're going to notice is that there are U's instead of T's, right? So uracils, another nitrogen base, instead of thymine, the one we normally see in DNA. And also, I only see one strand here. RNA is single-stranded, not double-stranded like DNA. So. That's our first difference. RNA is single-stranded, DNA is double-stranded. The sugar in RNA is ribose, and the sugar in DNA is actually deoxyribose, hence where they get their namesakes from. RNA, a difference I've already mentioned, <coughs> has uracil that pairs with adenine. So in RNA, U pairs with A. DNA has thymine, which pairs with adenine. So in DNA, T pairs with A. Now, what does this RNA stuff do? What is it all about? How is it really the bridge between DNA and making a protein? Well, proteins are made, let's get all this stuff on the screen, in the ribosomes in the cytoplasm, or I should say on the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. The DNA determines which proteins need to be made, and a gene on the DNA molecule is copied. This copy is then called RNA, the copy of the instructions are then <coughs> excuse me, sent out of the nucleus to the ribosome in the cytoplasm. And RNA, this bottom part, number four here, it just says RNA is like a messenger, right? And we're going to learn that there's actually a type of RNA called messenger RNA. It just carries the message of, that's on that gene in the nucleus. It carries that message all the way outside the nucleus to the ribosome where the protein will be made. So it's like a messenger, really. Speak of the devil. So what is messenger RNA? It's like I just said. It travels from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, to the ribosomes, which live in the cytoplasm, with the instructions for making a protein. Remember, because the RNA is a copy of a gene, a single gene on DNA. So. It's like the messenger between DNA and the nucleus and ribosomes and the cytoplasm. These two things would not be able to interact with each other without this bridge that is RNA. And we know that the instructions are carried in codons, right? Just like DNA is broken up into codons, series of three nucleotides, so is RNA. And the first codon, like the first codon in any gene in DNA, is called a start codon, okay? But when we talk about RNA, this start codon, this is where the RNA is actually going to attach to the ribosome and tell the ribosome where to start building that protein. Because remember, we've been saying ribosomes are little protein factories for months now, and now we're finally seeing them in action. 
the rest of that RNA molecule sequence, which is made of nucleotides, is going to dictate the order of amino acids for that protein. And when you dictate the order of amino acids of a protein, you're going to dictate the ultimate function of that protein. And of course, the last codon in the RNA, just like in the DNA of, just like in the gene that the RNA is a copy of from DNA, there's a stop codon that tells the ribosome, okay, this protein is made. Now, there's one other kind of RNA that I really, really care about you understand. So there's messenger RNA, which acts as a bridge to carry the gene, the genetic message of DNA out to the ribosome. And then there's this guy, tRNA, also known as transfer RNA. Transfer RNA reads the message carried by mRNA and gathers the right amino acids for making the protein. You have to think of it like the amino acids are kind of free floating around in the cytoplasm. And once this guy, tRNA, which there are many of them, once they read a specific codon on mRNA, they're gonna go and get the amino acid that that codon codes for. The tRNA takes these amino acids that are just free floating in the cytoplasm and transfers them to the ribosome where they'll be held in place and bonded to other amino acids. Does anybody remember what the bond between amino acids is called? That's a way back in unit two kind of thing. They are called peptide bonds. All right, so a cell keeps its cytoplasm stocked with all 20 amino acids. So the tRNA is always going to have the full pool of amino acids to pull from. Now the one end of the tRNA attaches to one amino acid and carries it to the ribosome. Typically it's this end right here. See this kind of like exposed end, this uneven end. This is the end that's going to attach to the amino acid and as this whole structure travels to the ribosome, it'll kind of trail behind it. Okay, and then there's this type of RNA. This one I don't care as much about that you, you really have it at the forefront of your mind, like mRNA and tRNA, but it's ribosomal RNA. It's found in the ribosome, funny enough. Uh, and these are just used to bind mRNA and the tRNA to the ribosome, right? Because there's a lot of ribonucleic acid here, right? And all ribosomal RNA does is uh, when mRNA gets there, it holds it in place. When the tRNAs get there, ribosomal RNA holds it in place. And this is really what allows protein synthesis to occur so consistently, right? The holding together of these uh, different types of RNA at the ribosome. Ooh, transcription, the first step of a two-step process that takes us from DNA to protein. Catch you in the next one, folks. Looking forward to it.